President Kamala Harris landed in Guatemala last night, kicking off her very first trip abroad as vice president. She's been given the task of fixing a complex immigration problem that has no easy solutions. Her two-day mission include meeting with the presidents of both Guatemala and Mexico, where she'll be trying to address the root causes of migration, border security, and economic development with the two leaders. Speaking at a press conference earlier today, Vice President Harris said that the Treasury and State and Justice Departments will work together to train local law enforcement and support Guatemalan prosecutors in anti-corruption efforts in the country. She also gave this blunt warning to would-be Guatemalan immigrants. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. Do not come. The United States will continue to enforce our laws and secure our border. There are legal methods by which migration can and should occur. Vice President Harris has little foreign policy experience, but has been tasked by President Biden with stemming the migration of thousands of Central Americans and Mexicans, something previous administrations, both Democrat and Republican, have struggled to do. Biden also has called on her to lead efforts to protect voting rights, another long-term thorny systemic issue. So what's the political calculus here? Is this high risk, high reward, or are the biggest headaches being passed off onto her? Joining me now to discuss is CQ Roll Call columnist and host of the Equal Time with Mary C. Curtis podcast, Mary C. Curtis, and the host of The World Tonight, right here on BNC, Naira Huck. So, Nair, I want to start with you. What is, just frame for us the, the, the magnitude of the issue that Kamala Harris is facing with dealing with uh, immigration or migration from, the, from the Central America mm -hmm. and Mexico. Look, it, it's pretty historic, right? The first woman of color in this high-level leadership position going to a country of people of color trying to solve problems that kind of come back to problems the United States helped create. Let's not forget, the war on drugs uh, under Reagan um, was responsible for most, much of the corruption and much of the deportation of gangs that have led to exactly the type of violence and poor governance that is forcing people off of their land to head up north. So she is now tasked with dealing and resolving decades worth of challenges that you know, Republicans and Democrats have struggled to deal with. And, and Charles, it, it leads me to wonder, right? We, we talk so much about this glass ceiling that she shattered, and we're not talking really about the glass cliff that she may be pushed off of. And the glass cliff is the concept that women get handled, get handed leadership roles, uh, specifically by men in times of crisis, when the, the potential for failure is also at its highest. I mean, I, I hear this remark of don't come here, uh, do not come here. I cannot imagine President Biden being in a position to have to say that. Instead, it got passed off to Kamala the cop once again. And I also can't imagine a situation in which that puts the United States in any better of a position uh, with the right wing, right? Like she has been effectively tasked with the two hardest problems facing this administration and isn't really given any new tools to do anything about it. Mary, what are your feelings about this? I mean, uh, maybe she wants this. I don't you know. You help me understand it. Uh, but but when she's in Guatemala uh, yesterday or earlier today, when she gave that speech, basically what she was saying was, we're going to help you to be able to learn how to be less corrupt. Really, what, this problem is so multifaceted. It requires a lot of funding. Uh, it can't, you can't just teach them how to prosecute better, and that's going to solve this problem. It, it has many tentacles. How do you feel about w w what Naira just said about, you know, is this just a tough problem that she's being handed? Or is this something she wants to do and can, have, can do and has the resources to do? 
you know, she made a good, Naira made wonderful points, but they always say when you want something done, give the job to a black woman, which they really are giving her this huge job. Uh, and, uh, you know, in a sense, I think that Joe Biden had a very close relationship with President Obama when he was vice president, and he had a lot of tasks, and he wants to have that same kind of relationship. And in many ways, I think Vice President Kamala Harris wants to take these things on. She knows that she will be criticized, not just for what she does, but who she is. She's also the daughter of immigrants. And I think that she, in a sense, wants to be seen in this leadership position, because let's face it, she is really on the top of the list to be the successor to Joe Biden. That said, it is tough. This immigration problem, which has bedeviled every administration, and as you say, there are root causes with climate change, with the lack of economic opportunity, and with this corruption issue. Will this money and aid get to the people who need it? Uh, I saw so many uh, reports from there that had folks who don't really have even enough to eat. Uh, they don't have homes. Would you send your child up if you were that desperate? Of course you would. But uh, I believe that she wants to be seen in these leadership positions, but she wants the support of the administration uh, as she does that and not be left hanging with these problems. Right now, I think she is doing that job. Uh, and as you can see, she's going to get flack and from the right wing no matter what she does. She's, there, she's already be, being criticized for why aren't you at the border? when it's clear that she says she's going after right. the root problems, which is making folks come in the first place. Uh, she's tough, she's shown she can handle it, but you do hope that she has that support. So Naira, what do you think about Mary's, Mary's point about uh, you know the parallels between uh, Harris working with Biden and Biden working with Obama, that, that, that Biden took on some big uh, tasks too? But it appears to me that you know biden tasks that he took on were not demonized in the same way quite you know he he was there to save the auto industry that's that's kind of an honorable thing to do to have some distractors about the money money spent but it still was an honorable thing to do he took on you know how do we solve cancer nobody's going to demonize cancer but each of the things that kamala harris has been tasked with are so highly charged so politicized particularly by the last administration that she walks into it with, it seems to me, into a minefield. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, and Biden was also tasked with doing outreach and, you know, peacemaking with uh, Capitol Hill. And you know, Senator Harris is that 51st tie-breaking vote, right? She could potentially be doing infrastructure negotiations, but that's what Biden is doing. And she's now given the task of unpacking Jim Crow 3.0 and of resolving a immigration crisis that has never really been addressed under multiple administrations. And so my concern for her is that, and I, I feel this deeply, right, as a woman also, um, the idea of proving yourself and, and wanting to be able to take on that tough task. But these are tasks that Honestly, when it comes to like, like racism in America, that is a white man problem. A black woman already, black women already got Joe Biden to that office and to the presidency and helped and fought all along the way. These are things that the white man needs to be talking to other white men to figure out and not have the woman of color come in the crosshairs of what has always been, whether it's immigration and the idea that that's, you know, white replacement concerns and worries, or the idea of, uh, you know, voting rights and maintaining white supremacy. Like, this already hits people of color hard enough, and she's already been uniquely demonized for who she is and all the skills she brings to the table. Well, I'd like to see, you know, President Biden address these head on himself. You know, Mary voting Curtis, rights is so Naira close Hutt. to her. It's, it's so close to her. And I think with your former guest, when you had Senator Franken on, I think it's such an existential threat, this issue of the voting rights and what could happen if something isn't done uh, to make sure that we have free and fair elections from here on in. So I do think this is something close to her heart. I do worry that I don't see quite the urgency 
among, as Naira said, uh, many of the uh, white males in the administration about how incredibly dire the situation is. Mercy Curtis, Naira Huck, thank you so much for joining. We have a whole show about why nobody's taking this voter suppression thing seriously enough. We'll have you back for that. Thank you so much. Great.